Hello everyone, this is uh, lesson S7 and uh, an example of how we use triangulation. The question here we've got is from two points 120 meters away from each other, measure at an angle of 75 degrees and 65 degrees towards a distance points. And the question is how far from the baseline is the object? Well, there's a few steps that we're going to do here and step number one is for us to draw a baseline. So we're going to take a baseline and we're going to draw a line and I'm going to draw it about six centimeters. Uh, usually we want something that will divide nice and evenly into the 120 or whatever the distance is between the points. So we're using six centimeters here. Now what that means is the scale of this drawing is that six centimeters is equal to 120 meters in real life. And so one centimeter on this scale is actually going to be equal to 20 meters. Now the angles of 75 and 65 because that is our scale for this baseline. We're going to put our protractor here and we're going to measure our first angle to be 65 uh, degrees. So I'm going to draw the point right there at 65 degrees. And we are going to put our line here so that it through a little bit difficult with the computer here but okay so we've got our line and we're going to draw our line we'll extend it up a ways looks like that from the other side we're going to find a point that is 75 degrees. Mark the point there. Bring this up. Something like that. and this is where we're going to draw our second line right along there okay so what we've done here is we've created a scale drawing where this represents 120 meters now where these meet up these actually meet up at eight and a half centimeters so this measurement being 8.5 centimeters away. Now one centimeter represented 20 meters in real life. And so we're going to take that 8.5 multiply it by 20 in order to get 170 meters away. So this distant object, which we can find right here, is 170 meters away from the baseline. And essentially what this is is drawing a scale model using a triangle, a model triangle at set angles in order for us to put this together. Hope that helps. So how is this a measurement done with stars? It's triangulation. Well it's done using, uh, finding the position both in January and June or six months apart in actuality. And what this does is it creates a huge baseline, a baseline that's equal to uh, the full diameter of the Earth's rotation around the sun. And 
so that full rotation winds up uh, bringing us to a point where we should be able to measure these angles. But due to the fact that the Earth is also always spinning on its axis, we need to use these distant stars as reference points in order to make sure, and that process is known as a parallax, right? Uh, please write that in the side of your notes, parallax, and that's just using stars as a reference to get the angles right. I'm going to say correct, it's not necessarily 90 degrees for uh, triangulation. Now there's a couple of space distances that you need to be aware of. The first one is the astronomical unit, and this is the average distance from the, from the sun to earth. Now, in kilometers, that is 150 million kilometers. This is different than a light year. A light year is also a measurement of distance, which is the distance light travels in a year. So if we had, let's say, uh, an object that was one light year away from us, it would take one year for that light to get there. One year for light to travel from that object to Earth. Now this is a little bit bigger. It is 9, 4, 9, 1, 2. 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, that is 9.5 trillion kilometers. Now, if you want to find out where a star's coordinates are, where to find a star, we don't actually look for an address, but we measure it and we find its location on Earth with essentially two angles. And this is just two angles that help us find out where it is. The first one is the azimuth, which is the angle clockwise from north. So we start facing north and we go clockwise however many degrees. And the second one is the altitude, which is the angle above the horizon. And this is measured with what we call an astrolabe. Here's an example of a quick little astrolabe where you can then measure the angle in which the uh, star is up from your, the horizon. Whereas the azimuth would be measured with the compass, number of degrees, this is measured with an astrolabe, angle up. So let's take a look at a few examples here. Here we've got north right here. And if we work our way clockwise, it would work this way. And we're looking for the star that's got an azimuth altitude of 270 and 40, which means we would start at north and work our way around 270 degrees, and then up from the horizon, 40 degrees. You can see that brings us to star A. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. Um, let's do this one. 
Okay, the next one is at 115 and 10. So here, we're again, we're going to start here. We're going to work our way to around 115. That's just a little bit beyond 90, not nearly up to 180. Up 10 degrees, you see that brings us to star E. Let's take a look at a third one. We're at zero and 53, which means that we start right here and we go up 53 degrees. You see that brings us to star C. Now I realize that it's difficult for us to see this all within a two-dimensional frame, but this is not a bad way to go. And let's do the last one. Oh, let's do the last one that's kind of orangey color. Okay, the last one is 290 and 86. Again, starting here, we're going all the way around. 290 will bring us past here, uh, west, up 86 degrees. You see that brings us all the way to star B. So, with all of this together, the triangulation, the azimuth altitude, this is how we determine the location of stars. Hope this helps, and thanks for watching.